You know what I'm saying? I don't play games, y'all know. You know what I'm saying? I'm a grown man. I don't play games. Diddy, once celebrated for his rise from rapper to a major business mogul, now faces allegations that go beyond individual accusations involving years of systematic misconduct and exploitation. The most shocking claim is that he used his business empire to facilitate and conceal what he allegedly termed freak-offs, events where participants were reportedly coerced into engaging in recorded sexual acts. These activities reportedly included minors among the victims, revealing a deeply unsettling side to his business operations and inner circle. Since the allegations surfaced, Diddy's closest friends and associates have chosen to remain silent, which has only intensified scrutiny. This silence is being met with suspicion and speculation, particularly as some social media users and online detectives suggest that these individuals might have known or even been complicit in Diddy's alleged activities. Many of these suspicions have stemmed from the resurfacing of old videos and social media posts where celebrities previously discussed their experiences attending Diddy's infamous white parties or other gatherings he hosted. Attorney Tony Busby, representing many of the accusers, has taken a central role in bringing these allegations to light. His firm's involvement highlights the scale of the accusations. Busby claims that a staggering 3,285 individuals have come forward, with 120 individuals officially seeking civil claims. Among these claimants, approximately half are male and the other half female, and a notable 25 were reportedly minors at the time of the alleged incidents. These statistics underscore the widespread and disturbing nature of the allegations, raising questions about how such actions could have gone undetected for so long within Diddy's circle and in the public eye. So here's a look at some of the celebrities who have long-standing ties to P. Diddy and have been part of his close circle. These figures have often been seen at his events, collaborated with him on various projects, and maintained a friendship with him over the years. Jay-Z. Jay-Z and P. Diddy's friendship has been one of the most prominent alliances in hip hop, rooted in their shared ambition and pursuit of success from the early days of their careers. Their connection dates back to the 1990s, a decade that saw both men rise as icons in the music industry. Diddy, as the mastermind behind Bad Boy Records, and Jay-Z as the driving force of Rockefeller Records. At the time, they were often seen as friendly competitors, with each building an empire while also supporting the other's work. Though they each strove to reach the top, any rivalry between them was amicable and never escalated into serious conflict, a rare dynamic in the often intense hip-hop landscape. Their friendship strengthened over the years, with frequent public appearances together at major events, from awards shows to high-profile parties. Their business collaborations mirrored this personal connection, leading them to join forces on music and even a 2010 concert series that symbolized their mutual respect. Both have spoken highly of each other in public forums. Diddy has praised Jay-Z's strategic thinking in business, while Jay-Z has acknowledged Diddy's influence in merging music with fashion, lifestyle, and more. Their relationship also expanded beyond the music scene, with both men venturing into diverse industries, including fashion, spirits, and media, often setting trends in these fields as well. However, as Diddy's legal troubles have surfaced, the dynamic between them has taken a new turn. Jay-Z has not publicly addressed Diddy's incarceration or the serious allegations brought against him, a silence that has sparked considerable online speculation. Some social media users have interpreted Jay-Z's lack of response as a sign of his possible awareness of Diddy's actions, with theories circulating that Jay-Z may have known about, or even participated in, some of Diddy's events, particularly the notorious freak-offs. Amid this media storm, another hip-hop figure has weighed in. Rapper 50 Cent, a longtime competitor and a critic of both Diddy and Jay-Z, has used social media to stir the pot. Following an FBI raid on Diddy's properties, 50 Cent posted an image on Instagram that mocked Jay-Z's silence, depicting Jay's face on a milk carton with the word missing and the caption, anybody seen Jay LOL. A couple of months later, in May, he continued to taunt Jay-Z, suggesting that he was intentionally keeping a low profile while Diddy's legal issues were under scrutiny. His post read, Jay in hibernation, he ain't coming outside till this she with puff blow over. No brunch, no lunch, no dinner. 
LOL. This commentary by 50 Cent adds a new layer to the public's perception, fueling discussions around the possible implications of Jay-Z's silence. As Diddy faces an intense legal battle and accusations of widespread misconduct, the actions of his close friends and associates, or lack thereof, remain under close watch. The friendship between these two music giants, once seen as a pillar of mutual respect, has now become a subject of curiosity and, for some, suspicion. Whether Jay-Z's silence signifies mere discretion or something more will likely continue to be debated as the case unfolds. Beyoncé The relationship between P. Diddy and Beyoncé has long been characterized by professional respect and a friendly rapport, primarily due to their mutual connection with Jay-Z. Since the early 2000s, the two have crossed paths at numerous industry events, award shows, and high-profile gatherings. These encounters have often shown them interacting and occasionally supporting each other's work, reflecting a camaraderie that's notable within the competitive music industry. However, recent controversies have placed their relationship under a curious and somewhat dramatic spotlight. A growing internet trend fueled by past footage of artists like Adele and Lizzo thanking Beyoncé at award ceremonies has given rise to a wild theory that these gestures are made to appease Beyoncé or stay in her good graces. This idea has captivated online audiences, with social media now flooded with parodies and memes of people ironically thanking Beyoncé for everyday things. This trend has even spilled into celebrity circles, where it's become a humorous yet pointed way to acknowledge the reach of the so-called Beyoncé effect. Adding to the intrigue, Jojo Siwa recently leaned into the trend while speaking at the Industry Dance Awards. She referenced the conspiracy humorously by saying, I also have to say thank you to Beyoncé, just so that we can keep the dancing community safe. A tongue-in-cheek nod to the ongoing online saga. This remark, like the countless TikTok videos, taps into the lighthearted yet conspiratorial sentiment driving the trend. In addition to Siwa, other high-profile personalities are also chiming in. Piers Morgan, known for his controversial takes, recently issued an apology to both Beyoncé and Jay-Z after airing an interview with singer Jaguar Wright. During this interview, Wright made several inflammatory comments about Diddy, Beyoncé, and Jay-Z, which stirred up further online chatter. Morgan's apology seemingly acknowledged the intensity of the conversation around these icons, possibly aiming to distance himself from the bold accusations made on his platform. The humor and satire surrounding this trend have turned it into a unique social media phenomenon. While many fans enjoy the joke, others ponder the underlying dynamics of celebrity influence, power, and allegiance in Hollywood. Beyoncé's influence, whether exaggerated or not, continues to spark conversations that blur the line between conspiracy and playful fan speculation, making her connection to figures like Diddy and Jay-Z all the more fascinating to dissect. Usher Usher and Diddy share a history that dates back to the early stages of Usher's career in the 1990s. At the time, Usher was just emerging as an artist, newly signed under the guidance of producer L.A. Reid. To help him acclimate to the intense world of the music industry, Reid sent Usher to live with Diddy in New York City, where he attended what Diddy called Puffy Flavor Camp. This setup was intended to be an immersive learning experience, a crash course on everything from music production and performance to the realities of fame and celebrity culture. Diddy took on a mentor role for the young artist, helping Usher mold his persona as an entertainer and teaching him how to navigate the challenges of stardom. Usher has often reflected on this time, acknowledging Diddy's role in shaping his understanding of the industry. He credits Diddy with instilling in him key lessons on building a brand and managing the pressures of fame. However, Usher has also noted the extreme aspects of his time at Diddy's camp. In several interviews, he has made lighthearted remarks that hint at the adult-oriented lifestyle he was exposed to, implying that he was surrounded by activities and events well beyond what he was accustomed to at such a young age. Speaking with Howard Stern, Usher described the experience as pretty wild, adding that he witnessed very curious things that, at the time, he didn't fully comprehend. When Stern playfully asked Usher if he would ever consider sending his own children to Diddy's camp, Usher's immediate response was a definitive HL no. This reaction has fueled further speculation among fans and the media 
particularly given the recent legal issues Diddy is facing. Usher's comment, coupled with past mentions of the camp's extravagant and unconventional atmosphere, has contributed to a growing sense of intrigue around Diddy's influence during that period. Recently, fans noticed that Usher's account on the social media platform X was suddenly wiped clean, prompting widespread speculation that he might be distancing himself from his past association with Diddy. The timing led many to wonder if this decision was related to the allegations surrounding Diddy. However, Usher later clarified the situation by posting that his account had been hacked, seemingly putting to rest any rumors of deliberate action. The early mentorship between Diddy and Usher remains a point of fascination, particularly as Usher's career has blossomed independently. As Diddy faces heightened scrutiny, this connection is part of a larger narrative that explores how his influence touched the lives of many artists in ways that are now being re-examined through a different lens. Justin Bieber When music executive Scooter Braun first discovered a young Justin Bieber on YouTube, he was quick to bring him under professional management, establishing the Raymond Braun Music Group as a joint venture with Usher to support Bieber's career. Usher's network played a pivotal role in Bieber's rise, bringing in other industry veterans, including Sean Diddy Combs, to help guide him through the whirlwind of fame. Combs, already established as a mentor to many emerging talents, became a key figure in Bieber's early journey, exposing the teenage singer to aspects of the industry lifestyle that were entirely new to him. With Combs now facing serious allegations, several interactions between him and the young Bieber have come under scrutiny. A video from November 2009 posted on Bieber's YouTube channel, features a 15-year-old Bieber and Combs discussing plans to spend 48 hours together. Speaking into the camera, Combs made the cryptic comment, where we're hanging out and what we're doing, we can't really disclose, but it's definitely a 15-year-old's dream. Combs also noted that he did not have legal guardianship of Bieber during this time, though he had previously taken on that role with other young artists, like Usher. This statement, when revisited in the current context, has prompted questions about the mentorship Bieber received and whether it strayed from a typical professional relationship. In another video from December 2010, when Bieber was 16, Combs is seen teaching the young star how to swag walk. At one point, Combs lightly chastised Bieber, saying, You starting to act different, huh? You ain't been calling me and hanging out how we used to hang out. Such moments hint at a relationship where Combs perhaps saw himself not just as a mentor, but as an influence on Bieber's personal behavior and choices. Also notable was a promise Combs made to Bieber in 2010, vowing to gift him a white Lamborghini for his 16th birthday if he continued working hard on his music career. The topic of this car came up in a 2011 appearance on the Jimmy Kimmel Live, where Combs, alongside Bieber, revealed that the young artist had access to the car in Combs' home for a couple of days. Combs remarked, he knows better than to be talking about the things that he does with Big Brother Puff on national television. Everything ain't for everybody, implying that some aspects of their time together were kept private. Despite this closeness, Diddy and Bieber did not collaborate on music until 2023, when they worked on the song Moments. Yet, as Bieber has grown in the industry, he has been candid about struggling with the pressures that came with fame, facing addiction and mental health challenges. Bieber has openly discussed his rebellious years, particularly his struggles with drug abuse and the emotional toll of early fame. These revelations have now fueled speculation that his early influences, including Diddy and potentially Usher, may have contributed to the pressures that eventually led him down a difficult path. Some fans have even speculated that Bieber's challenges, combined with his impressionable youth during those years, make him a potential victim of an exploitative environment. Interestingly, amid all this speculation, Bieber has not made any public statements on the matter. He and his wife Haley recently welcomed their first child, Jack, and Bieber seems focused on his family life. For now, Bieber's silence leaves fans and the public to wonder about his perspective on his past relationships with Diddy and Usher, and whether he will eventually address the impact of those early years on his journey in the music industry. Ashton Kutcher P. Diddy and Ashton Kutcher's friendship may initially seem unexpected, but it's rooted in shared interests that go beyond their primary careers. While Diddy made a name for himself in music and business, 
Kutcher built his reputation in acting and later expanded into technology and venture capitalism. Their friendship came to light around 2008 when the two began to co-host events and glamorous parties together, many of which became well-known in Los Angeles for their impressive guest lists and lavish atmosphere. Kutcher, in particular, was frequently seen at these gatherings, lending his celebrity status and adding to the event's star power. They even collaborated on promoting Diddy's vodka brand, C-Rock, reinforcing their business bond. Kutcher has shared a lighthearted story about how the friendship began, connecting back to his show, Punked. According to Kutcher, Diddy was adamant about not being the target of a prank. He recounted, It started over punked because he was like, Yo, you can't punk me. I was like, I don't know what to tell you. Everybody is on the table. He's like, not me. I'm off the table. This humorous exchange sparked a friendship, and the two reportedly enjoyed spending time together, especially watching football. Over the years, their friendship became a familiar part of both of their public lives, showcasing a different side of each as they navigated fame and business. However, following Diddy's recent arrest, rumors have begun circulating that Kutcher's connection with Diddy may have impacted his personal life. Some reports claim that Kutcher's wife, actress Mila Kunis, has temporarily moved out of their home, possibly in response to the fallout from Diddy's case. While neither Kutcher nor Kunis has addressed these rumors, the claims have fueled further speculation about their future, with some sources suggesting that the couple might consider leaving Hollywood altogether, possibly moving to Europe for a fresh start. Whether or not these rumors hold any truth, Kutcher's longtime association with Diddy and his presence at many of the rapper's famous parties have undeniably put him in the spotlight as Diddy's case unfolds. Leo DiCaprio In Leonardo DiCaprio's case, a source close to the actor recently told the Daily Mail that he has had no ties to Diddy for years. DiCaprio did attend a few of Diddy's parties in the early 2000s, but as the source put it, literally everyone did. The gatherings DiCaprio was involved in were reportedly nothing like the freak-off parties that have surfaced in recent allegations. The source expressed frustration with any assumptions linking DiCaprio to the current controversy, suggesting it's unreasonable to imply involvement based on photos that are more than two decades old. Jennifer Lopez Jennifer Lopez's history with Diddy, however, runs deeper, as the two dated on and off between 1999 and 2001 during a highly publicized and tumultuous period. Their relationship was marked by a major scandal in December 1999, when the couple was involved in a nightclub shooting in New York City. Lopez was arrested but quickly released, while Diddy faced charges related to weapon possession and attempted bribery, which he later overcame in court. Their high-profile romance was rocky, and Lopez later described the relationship as emotionally taxing saying in a Vibe magazine interview that it had left her crying crazy and going nuts. Despite the challenges, Lopez and Diddy maintained a respectful public rapport after their breakup, often speaking positively of each other in later years. The story took another twist with the release of Lopez's 2024 documentary, The Greatest Love Story Never Told, which largely chronicles her romance with her now ex-husband, Ben Affleck. In the documentary, Lopez makes references to past relationships in which she experienced being manhandled and a couple of other unsavory things. Though she does not name anyone specifically, rumors have surged online, with many speculating that Lopez might be alluding to her relationship with Diddy. Some even suggest that Lopez's history with Diddy, coupled with supposed incriminating footage, may have contributed to her split from Affleck. While none of these claims are confirmed, the lingering connections to Diddy continue to spark debate and keep Lopez's name circulating in discussions about Diddy's unfolding legal battles. The Kardashians The Kardashian family and Paris Hilton, icons of the socialite scene, have both shared connections with P. Diddy over the years, often appearing at his parties. The Kardashians' relationship with Diddy has surfaced on Keeping Up With The Kardashians, notably in a 2014 episode where Khloe Kardashian mentioned attending a wild party where Half the people were butt naked. Courtney chimed in, listing the star-studded guest roster with names like Diddy, Quincy, Justin Bieber, and French Montana. Chloe playfully responded, So far, so good, showcasing the family's familiarity with Diddy's infamous party scene. Paris Hilton, a close friend of the Kardashians, has long been known for her own party-centric lifestyle, often mingling with hip-hop's elite, 
including Diddy. A close friend to Kim Kardashian since the early 2000s, Hilton has appeared at various events hosted by Diddy. She even attended his elaborate 50th birthday bash, later raving about it as an epic night and one of the most memorable events she'd experienced, referring to it as sick in true Hilton fashion. While both the Kardashians and Hilton maintain a polished social image, their presence at Diddy's gatherings underscores how interconnected Hollywood's social circles can be, particularly within the worlds of music and reality TV. The Kardashian family, Paris Hilton, and Diddy have often mingled in the same circles, creating a long-standing connection across different spheres of fame. Kevin Hart Kevin Hart has made it clear that he wants no part in the allegations surrounding Sean Diddy Combs, particularly in the wake of the controversy surrounding the rapper's past parties. When approached by paparazzi while out with his wife, Hart was asked about his role in hosting one of Diddy's infamous parties. His response was blunt, stating, wrong person, wrong question, and refusing to engage with further inquiries about the allegations tied to Combs. The inquiry was related to a past event where Hart hosted the release party for Diddy's Last Train to Paris album in 2010. In the throwback footage shared by Entertainment Tonight, Hart can be seen at the party sitting on the edge of a hot tub surrounded by women. A humorous yet chaotic moment occurred when a woman's hair caught fire after leaning into a lit candle, which Hart reacted to in a mix of shock and amusement. In the video, Hart laughs as he recounts the situation, recalling how his friend Trey Songs casually mentioned the fire, saying, yo, her hair is on fire, without seeming to panic. Hart joked about how the real funny part was not the fire itself, but the way Trey kept his cool in the midst of it. As Combs' legal troubles continue, including serious charges like racketeering and sex trafficking, the public is revisiting the infamous parties he used to host, known for their wild and often controversial nature. These events, often dubbed freak-offs, have drawn attention amid the federal investigation into Combs' alleged criminal behavior. While Kevin Hart's past involvement in hosting such an event is clear, he has distanced himself from any connection to the allegations, opting not to comment further as the scrutiny around Diddy and his parties intensifies. Athletes Diddy's parties have long been a magnet for a diverse range of celebrities, athletes, and even political figures, showcasing his ability to unite people from all walks of life. One of the most famous comments about his gatherings came from basketball legend LeBron James during a 2020 livestream with Diddy, where he grinned and said, Ain't no party like a Diddy party. This comment, though not an outright admission of attendance, led to speculation that LeBron had participated in these iconic events. Diddy's relationship with soccer stars, particularly David and Victoria Beckham, also garnered attention. In a 2006 appearance on GMTV, Diddy mentioned having a long-distance relationship with Beckham, which he clarified by recalling their first meeting at one of his parties. Over the years, the two were seen together at various events, cementing their connection in the public eye. A particularly memorable moment in Diddy's socialite world occurred during a World Cup charity auction in 2006, hosted by Beckham. At the auction, Diddy offered a selection of extravagant experiences, including a weekend at his Hamptons estate and a night out in New York City with the humorous promise that winners would wake up on Wednesday lying beside me. The winning bid was placed by soccer star Wayne Rooney, who paid pound 150K for the experience. However, Diddy later joked that Rooney's wife, Colleen, had banned him from claiming his prize, adding a humorous twist to the situation. The image of Kobe Bryant attending a party hosted by Diddy, alongside his wife, Vanessa, has fueled intense speculation among internet users regarding the nature of Bryant's relationship with Diddy and whether he might have been aware of the alleged illegal activities at the event. The debate has only intensified after Diddy's recent legal troubles, particularly his arrest. Some people have questioned if Bryant, a high-profile athlete, was knowingly involved in the controversial environment, while others maintain that he was simply a guest, unaware of any wrongdoing. This speculation has gained even more traction following the tragic death of Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna, which occurred just 43 days after the party. The timing has led to conspiracy theories suggesting that Bryant's death may be connected to his attendance at the event, though no evidence has substantiated such claims. The theory that Bryant might have been aware of or involved in illicit activities at the party is particularly concerning for some, 
as the nature of the party has become more scrutinized in light of Diddy's legal battles. Martha Stewart Diddy's gatherings were not just limited to athletes and musicians. Business moguls and lifestyle experts were regulars at his events as well. Martha Stewart, for example, attended Diddy's 1998 and 2009 birthday celebrations, calling the latter the party of the century. Tommy Lee, drummer of Motley Crue, was another unexpected guest at Diddy's 2007 White Party, where he was seen alongside Diddy and Mariah Carey. Legendary musicians such as Aretha Franklin and Diana Ross also graced his events in 2004, highlighting the broad appeal and cultural significance of Diddy's parties. Prince Harry In a more unusual connection, Diddy was linked to royalty and political figures. In a lawsuit involving producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones, Prince Harry's name came up, suggesting that Diddy used high-profile associations to attract crowds to his infamous parties. While there's no suggestion of any improper behavior involving Prince Harry, past photos of him with Diddy, Prince William, and Kanye West at the 2007 concert for Diana hint at their occasional connections. Diddy himself once mentioned in 2011 that he had considered inviting the British princes to his parties but decided against it, humorously noting that they might get up to trouble with him. Donald Trump Diddy also maintained a long-standing rapport with former President Donald Trump, which dates back to the 1990s. The two were photographed together at several high-profile events, including the 1997 U.S. Open and the opening of Diddy's restaurant, Justin's. Trump and Diddy continued their social interactions over the years, often appearing together at galas and charity events alongside celebrities like Naomi Campbell and Lenny Kravitz. In 2009, Tiffany Trump attended Diddy's white party with her mother, Marla Maples, who described the event as stepping into another dimension due to the exclusive atmosphere and glamorous crowd. These diverse connections reflect the extraordinary allure and exclusivity that Diddy's gatherings held, drawing an impressive array of guests from entertainment, business, sports, and even politics. With each event, Diddy solidified his place as one of the most influential hosts in the celebrity world. Harv Pierre the December 2023 lawsuit filed against Harv Pierre and Sean Diddy Combs paints a disturbing picture of an alleged assault involving a 17-year-old victim. The lawsuit claims that Pierre played a key role in facilitating the victim's travel and participation in events that led to her being gang-raped at Combs' recording studio. According to the victim's account, the incident was part of a larger pattern of drug and alcohol-fueled exploitation, implicating not just Pierre and Combs, but other individuals within their circle. The inclusion of Daddy's House recordings and Bad Boy Entertainment in the lawsuit raises serious concerns about the potential role these companies played in enabling such an environment, suggesting possible corporate complicity in the alleged abuse. Christina Corum Christina Corum, a name frequently appearing in various legal cases, is also implicated in activities linked to Combs. In a lawsuit filed by producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones, Coram is accused of assisting Combs in procuring illegal drugs and sex workers for his events, while allegedly pressuring Jones into participating in these activities. Furthermore, Coram is named in a separate lawsuit filed in September 2024, where an unnamed woman claims she was coerced into traveling and performing for Combs under dubious circumstances. These allegations point to a deeply troubling environment within Combs's operations where staff and associates are said to have facilitated exploitative behaviors that may have been normalized or even encouraged. Cuba Gooding Jr. Cuba Gooding Jr. I see doubt. S involvement adds another layer of complexity to these allegations. In an amendment to Jones's lawsuit, Gooding is accused of groping and fondling Jones on Combs's yacht. While Gooding has denied the allegations, the inclusion of his name in this case highlights the broader culture of abuse and exploitation surrounding Combs and his circle. Gooding's past legal troubles, including accusations of sexual misconduct, further complicate his connection to the case, suggesting a larger pattern of problematic behavior among those associated with Combs. Justin Dior Combs and Christian Combs the involvement of Diddy's sons, Justin Dior Combs and Christian Combs, further complicates the case. Both sons are named in the lawsuit filed by Rodney Jones with accusations suggesting they may have witnessed or been complicit in events involving sex workers and underage girls at a listening party. 
The allegations against Christian Combs, including accusations of drugging and assaulting a woman, deepen the gravity of the case. Christian Combs is also facing a separate lawsuit in which he is accused of assaulting a woman aboard one of Combs's yachts, with Diddy named as a co-defendant. While both sons have denied these allegations, their involvement underscores a troubling pattern of behavior within the Combs family, where such actions may have been normalized or even facilitated by their father's influence. These lawsuits shine a light on broader issues within the entertainment industry, where abuse and exploitation appear to be systemic, particularly among those in positions of power. The legal proceedings surrounding these allegations could have profound implications, not only for Combs and his associates, but for the wider industry. As more cases emerge, the handling of these accusations by the courts will be pivotal, especially regarding the responsibility of corporations and individuals in positions of influence. These legal challenges represent a critical juncture for the entertainment industry to confront its culture of abuse and power imbalances, potentially catalyzing significant systemic change in how such cases are addressed.